Hi guys, this is a practical three-part introduction to FXGL. In the first part, we're going to set up a new project in IntelliJ from scratch uh, and then add FXGL as a dependency. We're going to add a few game objects, which are called entities, and we'll draw them to the screen. In the next part, we're going to replace those uh, entities with images so that you can have textures in your game. And in the final part, we're going to produce a platform specific image packaged in a zip file, which you can then send to other users to play your game. So if you build for Windows, you can send uh, Windows users and so on. And they won't require Java runtime environment because a platform specific image has all the dependencies bundled together. Right, so in IntelliJ, we're going to first create a new project if you haven't created a single project, then your menu is going to be different. So you'll have to um, play by ear. But generally, new project is what the sequence is. I'm going to select Maven project, but you can go with Gradle if you use Gradle. And make sure to select project SDK as 11 or higher. The name for this project is going to be called Introduction to FXGL and you can set your own uh, maven coordinates if you don't know what these are then don't worry defaults are fine you should see something like this uh, which is the maven uh, project object model file and in here we're going to create a dependency on fxgl Eleven point twelve is the latest stable version, so uh, we're going to use that. We're also going to tell the compiler that we're using Java eleven or higher. Even compiler plugin. And then we just need to add the release to point to something like 11. You can use anything that is above 11 as well. Then there is a button over here, load Maven changes. If there is no button, uh, then right click Maven reload project. And that should load FXGL library into your project. So we are now pretty much good to go. I'm going to create a package um, it doesn't really matter what you call it. And then we're going to create the starting point of our application. Let's call it a simple game app. It extends game application. This is the normal workflow when you extend, when you use FXGL. And then we're going to add public static void main, the entry point, and then call the launch function with the arguments. At this point, you should already be able to run your game. So if you right click and then click run, there we have it, a, an empty window with default um, size and default title. So we're now going to add a factory for our game objects. It's called an entity factory in FXGL, and that's the only place where entities get created. We're going to call it a simple factory. It implements entity factory, but there are no methods to implement. It just marks your factory as the entity factory. In this factory, I'm going to have um, the spawns annotation, which is going to tell FXGL uh, which method to call when you're spawning, say, um, enemy. The method signature has to be precisely this. Public entity, the method name could be anything, then spawn data type, and then the data object. 
So apart from the name of your method, the other parts have to be exactly the same because then FXGL knows how to call um, these methods. In here, we're going to call FXGL dot. So if you're unsure what you can use with FXGL, then just do FXGL dot and the ID will tell you what functions you can call. We need entity builder. We're going to pass the data in and we're going to just build and attach. Build means create the entity. Attach means add it to the game world. So it can be displayed on the screen. We probably want to add a view. So for this part, I'm just going to add a software generated shape, which is a rectangle. And let's set it to color red. So that enemies are going to be red uh, rectangles or squares, I suppose. And that is pretty much it for creating or rather defining what your enemy entity looks like. And then we come back to our app and then we override the init game method. This is the method that will be called to initialize all of your entities at the start of the game. Again, fxgl dot to see what we can call. For now, we need the game world and we're going to add the entity factory. This is us telling FXGL how or rather where the factory lives. Now that it knows what factory you're using to create entities, we can now start creating our enemies by just calling FXGL spawn and then typing exactly the same name that you specified here. Make sure it's um, it has no typos because otherwise um, FXGL will tell you that no such entity exists. We're going to spawn our entity at 100, 100. These are in pixels. This is X and this is Y. So if we run the game now, we should be able to see a red square at 100, 100. Well, almost. Um, build and attach, you don't have to do if you're adding your um, enemy or your entity to the game world yourself. So just build will do fine. And now we have our enemy entity on the screen. It doesn't do much, but it is our entity that we just created. In order for entities to do something, to have behavior, we need to add components. So for this one, I'm going to add a new component by calling the with uh, method. I'm going to add projectile component, which takes two things, direction and speed. Direction is going to be one zero, which is a vector that points to the right. This is the X component of the vector, and this is the Y component of the vector. And then we pass speed, something like 150, which is pixels per second. So now our entity moves because it has the projectile component behavior. And that is it for the first part. We've created a new project from scratch, we added FXGL as a dependency, and we created our entity to draw on the screen. The next part, we're going to add more entities, some gameplay, and we're going to replace software-generated shapes with actual images. Thanks for watching.